Michael Frankel, we got Brian Mendoza with us talking victory boxing, Rumble in the Rio. How you doing, sir? I'm good, yeah. I'm doing well. It's been like a while since we've done one of these. I, I think like July was the last time you fought. Yeah, I think it's going on like eight months or something. I've been dying, but finally getting back in the ring, that should be exciting. How are you holding composure and staying sane, not having fought every other week like you were used to for years? Um, just looking forward to hopefully doing that again now. After this fight, I'm hoping to start moving again and fight every couple weeks again for the rest of the year. Um, but yeah, it's just been killing me. It's like anxious and everything going crazy. The sparring's not enough. It doesn't like fulfill that need, you know, from that, the same way that fighting does. So I don't, I'm just excited and finally like get rid of the, all that anxiousness and everything. Getting back in the ring should be fun. I got a lot to unleash now. What's the people with your management? What What are your coaches <laughs> telling you to keep you, you know, to keep you all right during these last eight months to let you know that things are still going in the right way? Um, just the same old, same as always, like when I'm fighting, they tell me, you know, there's something coming up. So even now they're telling me uh, as soon as I get going, we'll get going again. So it's just, it's kind of just been on me, you know, like a little waiting game. And of course, having my team there to support, you know, they're just like, hold on, keep working. Um, Cause the only thing that really sucks about it is I don't take breaks. So I've been working every single day these past eight months and with no fight, you know, that's when it starts to take a toll, you know, like, uh, I want to get going. But like the finally getting going now, it, it, it gives me that motivation and everything again. So training hard, getting ready. Any fear of overtraining? Uh, no, my, tra my trainers try to kick me out of the gym from time to time, but I don't think so. Um, if you feel like you're really getting overtrained or something, you can just dial it back a little, but I haven't felt that. So like, I'll listen to my body. If I feel like I need to dial it back, I will, but I haven't felt that. And now, especially I'm in fight camp, so it's all out. For 14 and 0 out the gate, it was really quick. Mm -hmm. Did this sudden stop become frustrating at some point? Very frustrating, yeah. I was going crazy. Like I said, I was really anxious and I don't, I don't like that feeling. It felt real, I was like so happy fighting like every two weeks. And that, that whole streak I got going, I was just, I was happy all the time. Are you going to be like overzealous then come the 18th? Is there that possibility that you're just so excited to get back in there? Um, I don't think so. I think I should be able to keep it under control. But you will see me have a lot of fun in there. That's one thing. But um, that like overdoing it, I don't think so. I, sh I should, I still have an, enough experience with fighting all over and this and that to be able to keep it under control. So the 18th, tell us about the uh, guy standing across the ring from you. Um, so it should be, I can't pronounce his name right, but Tyler Poglin, Poglin, something like that. We apologize if we messed it up. <laughs> yeah, so um, I saw like a quick video on him and he just seems really awkward and it looks like he just has um, a little bit of a punch. His six wins, five of them are by knockout. So, awkward as in his movement or awkward as in one of those guys that kind of throws punches like, from odd angles? Both. Just com like all around awkward, he throws awkward, like his arms, his movement, everything is a little awkward. So um, I'll, I'll just go in there and adjust to him, see like what I have to set up, what I have to do off, off of his awkwardness and just figure him out really because even though he's awkward, it's still another opponent I didn't get to study that much. So I'll just go in there and figure that out. So do you get almost an excitement from seeing that it's a new challenge, a style you hadn't seen before? Yeah, definitely. That's always fun, getting different styles. That's why I liked um, how my team has been sending me to fight in different states and all that, because I, I get to see all these different styles and get the experience I didn't really get in amateurs, well, as much of it anyway. So yeah, moving, um, seeing the different styles is always fun anyway, but yeah. <laughs> There's that, but do you feel that you've missed somewhere, something in the career not fighting here too much and not getting that local push. Like you see on a big scale how this last big boxing fight with Garcia and Thurman, mm -hmm. the crowd was pretty one-sided because yeah. of the guy that had fought there a lot even though it wasn't his home mm -hmm. state. So do you feel that you've been, that you've lost something in the push of, from the local fans of not being active here totally? Yes and no. Um, yes because Lo like right now, locally, my name doesn't ring as much as it should. But at the same time, we are building a fan base by going out of state. So whenever I get um, on, start getting on TV fights and stuff, I'll actually have people in different states that are ready to start watching me. So locally, yes, and then um, nationally and worldwide, um, I haven't fought in another country yet. But it's still, I'm, 
I've met a lot of people from different countries already by getting that exposure in other states. So um, on a national level and everything, on TV, it, I think it'll help out that way. But locally, yeah, um, we do want to get a little, more, a little more push locally. And as we've said, that the last one here locally, next mm -hmm. one obviously here locally, mm -hmm. so you feel like you're doing a good job of starting that task of making yourself known to the local community? Yeah, definitely. Um, just from the last fight to this one, the fans are more excited to go to the fight. The tickets are selling easier. Um, it just sucks that it was so last minute that I got the opponent, but um, now that I have an opponent, the tickets are moving even faster. So, um, Was that worrisome for you? No, I'm not, I, I don't really stress about that. You know, um, <coughs> all our people are going. <laughs> all our people are going, so it's, um, it's good either way. It's just that now like, uh, like new people are going. People that haven't really gone to fights before, this and that, they want to go see because they've heard about me from the last one. And that's where that local push starts building up. So you feel you got that local buzz now. You hear the whispers and your name is involved. Yeah, because I'm trying to break out of um, all the local trainers and clubs. and all. Of course, they know me, but I want to get more into the casual side. Those people that just go to boxing fights every now and then, this and that. I want to start bringing them in, too, to um, get even more of a fan base than just all the local boxing people, the hardcore fans. And now heading into this fight, what do we see different come out of you in this one? Uh, about eight months worth of training. <laughs> <clears throat> does that give you, you, what has that been like for you, holding in all this new stuff and wanting to get out there and really test it out? Well, the thing that made it more frustrating was I actually did learn like a dramatic amount of new tricks and traps and all that in these eight months. It wasn't just eight months of the same old training. I learned tons and tons of new stuff, so that made it more frustrating with waiting. But, um, I did get to perfect a lot of stuff. I know a lot of new tricks, and I know how to set people set people up a lot more, and that's gonna be a big difference. So I think, in a way, the eight months training was good because I got I didn't just learn the new stuff. I got to really like get it ingrained in my head. Got that so, repetition with yeah. it. Yeah. This event, the pro side of the card, you local boxers, the amateur side of the card, which is an amateur side of the card, mm -hmm. the Rumble in the Rio, the local firefighter police officers. What do you guys, what do you think of that idea? Um, it's cool. It should bring even a, a bigger fight base. Like I said, um, they're, they're, they're part of that. A lot of cops and firefighters, you don't usually see like huge groups of them at the, at the fights because they're not really hardcore fans. That's part of the casual fans I was talking about. Um, so all the firefighters and cops and their families and stuff, they're going to see us now and that'll add to it. Because of course, even um, here locally, we want to grow the boxing fan base. We don't, we, don't, we don't just want hardcore, because we love the hardcore fans, of course, but um, the bigger the better. <laughs> you put on a big show, a big spot that night, and that helps generate that. Have you mm -hmm. even thought about that, not want to put pressure on yourself or expectations for the fight, but it would be a good opportunity right there to, for a big performance with yeah, those casual fans there to yeah. make your name. Well, that pressure is always there. Um, like I said, I didn't fight like um, too much in the amateur, so my name wasn't out there. So. Every single fight, I have to prove that I'm working harder than the guys with all that experience. I have to prove I'm smarter than them, working harder and all that. So that, that has to pay off with that. So the pressure is always there to perform big because I always want to do that. I don't want to just say, oh, that's just some guy that turned pro too quick and screwed up. So that pressure is there. 14 and 0, does that 0 at some point start to, instead of feel like something you can be proud of, almost a target on you? Um. I haven't felt that yet, so I can't really say. Um, but I know what you're saying, and maybe later on, but I don't think so right now. It's kind of, uh, I'm just proud of it. <laughs> so we'll see later on, but not right now anyway. So what's the message for the fans? Come out. I've got eight months worth of new tricks and all this stuff up my sleeve, so come check it out. It's going to be a big show, I promise. How can everybody follow you on social media? It's at La Bala Mendoza all across the board. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that. Anybody you need a thank and shout out to? Everybody that's been here supporting. Um, it's been a long time, this, especially for boxing. It's a long time to wait to fight again, but we're moving again, and we'll be up there. Thank you for the time, sir. Thank you.